We heard about Richard August because he was all over the news as the man who was sharing his Manhattan penthouse with 1,200 turtles, most of them endangered. It was the kind of fantastic story that New Yorkers love because it proves that everything and anything is always happening somewhere in this city. ABC, NBC, CBS, CNN, Discovery. Reporters from around the world flooded in, asked him their questions and sent out into the world his strange situation. But the press had painted a rather one-dimensional portrait. It seemed that Richard's efforts deserved more serious attention. Not more two-minute stories, but more grit and less gossip. So drawn to something untold, we tracked him down and found him here, at his home, buried in this right-angled jungle. All we knew was what the news had told us that ten years ago Richard was a writer eating dinner in a restaurant in Chinatown when he saw a diamondback terrapin in a tank with eels. He bought her for twenty dollars. They were about to take her back to the kitchen to chop her up, but Richard stopped them, took her home, bought a tank, placed her in it, and named her the Empress. And then slowly his empire began to grow. Then in the late 90s, Richard and other turtle keepers were exposed to a videotape that had been recently shot in the food markets in China. The footage devastated them. Not only was it terribly brutal, but again and again the turtle keepers were able to identify many, many endangered and critically endangered species amongst the more common species. And they calculated that 30,000 turtles were being bought daily in the food markets, and that every turtle regardless of its endangered status, was bound for the soup pot. The footage galvanized Richard and other turtle keepers into a frenzy of acquisition. Richard purchased hundreds of animals, including 13 critically endangered species. And in a few years, he became a major player in the turtle conservation world having acquired the largest genetic population of several of the world's most critically endangered species. And that was the story. But as we began filming, we soon became aware that Richard's operation was coming apart at the seams. His passionate pastime had swollen into an exhausting enterprise. His resources were diminishing, his finances were dwindling, and his art his abandoned writings, and all the remnants of his prior life were collecting dust in a storage space in New Jersey. We realized that we had begun filming during a period of crisis.
Richard was building an ark, or as conservationists today would call it, a group of assurance colonies. Richard was rescuing animals from extinction, assembling them by species, and trying to create, if possible, conditions in which they might breed and defy their disappearance. <laughs> 